The next type of soldering that you're going to do, and the most common type, is you're going to take electronic components and you're going to put them into your circuit board. So your circuit boards are either perf boards, like this, with the individual holes all lined out, or they're the cool printed circuit boards that you've made in my class. But whether you're doing these ones or these ones, I'm going to go over how to solder components on without roasting your board. So the very first thing to be aware is that when you are soldering, the solder always goes on the copper side. So when you take your component, you're going to bend it. So there's your component that's bent like this. And if you look on any circuit board, there's the copper side and there's the non-copper side. On the printed circuit board, here's the copper side, here's the non-copper side. And so when you're sticking electronic components in, you want to stick them going into the non-copper side. Like this. If you're putting them in this way, you're soldering it wrong. Another good tip when you're putting things into the circuit board is that you want the electronic component to lie flat, like this. What you want to avoid is when you're putting components in, to have them very high up. So for example, this, if I soldered it like this, this would be bad, you want this lower. And the reason why you want this lower, if this component accidentally bends over, it will create a short with this other component over here. So you want your electronic component to lie flat on the board before you solder it. Whenever we're soldering an electronic component into our circuit board, we want to be very careful not to overheat our circuit board. These traces and these pads are essentially copper stickers. And you can see, if I'm not too careful and I apply way too much heat, I can actually burn that sticker right off. And then that will give you a lot of trouble in the future. So when we're soldering a component on, we want to apply heat very quickly, apply some solder there really quickly, and then get out as fast as we can. We can always come back later. So let me show you what I mean. So first, we're going to clean our soldering iron. So it should be nice and shiny. Then we're going to tin our soldering iron. Very quickly, we're going to come in and apply heat. We're going to melt the solder on and we're going to get out as quick as we can. It should look like a tiny volcano. So I'll show you that again. So this is an example of what a good soldering job would look like. As you can see, this little cylinder is the close-up of the metal lead, or that little metal stick that comes out of the component. And as you can see, it is completely clothed in solder, much like a scarf. And you can see it runs down like a pyramid, so that it covers up that pad over there. So that's a good soldering job. So I'll show you that again. Tin it a little bit. Apply some heat, apply some solder, push the solder in, and then get out. So I'll show you that again. Let it cool off, and it should look like a tiny volcano. We can always come back with our soldering iron and just kind of clean that up can remelt and reform. So we can remelt and reform. So you know it's a good solder joint if I try to tug at this component and it doesn't come off the circuit board. If I tug at it, the electronic component should not wobble like that. 
If I look and turn the circuit board over, I can see why that happened. Number one, I forgot to solder this end. And number two, I uh, actually toasted this sticker and the sticker just burned right off. In this situation over here, when I was drilling, I was a little bit careless and I actually missed the pad a little bit. So the hole is off that circle. So we have to pay special attention when we're soldering this because if we're not careful, we're gonna have a very poor connection or we might even burn off this pad. To deal with that, you just go ahead and put the component through those holes like you normally would. This connection here is pretty easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder that in place first. Now for the other connection, I'm going to take the resistor lead and I'm going to go bend it so that the component lead is touching the copper trace. Then we're going to apply solder here and along here so that this other end of the component is reinforced in several places. So I got it on the pad, but I'm also going to put some solder along that path. And so what I've done is I've used the lead to create a wider path just to make sure that's reinforced. So now it's important to test the quality of your connection. Get your multimeter and take this dial and turn it down to the continuity test or the beep test. It looks like the sideways Wi-Fi symbol. So it should look like this. Take the two prongs of your multimeter, tap them together you should hear a beep. If you hear the beep, what that means is that these two points are electrically connected. Let's see how we did. So we're gonna take one of these little prongs and we're gonna put it on the circle pad, the big circle pad. We're gonna take the other prong and we're gonna put it on where we just soldered. We're hearing a beep, which means that these two points are electrically connected and these two were supposed to be connected, so that's good. I fixed up that patch there. Once you've confirmed that there's an electrical connection, you can go ahead and cut off that lead.